Hey guys, it's Nintendo Addict. Thought I'd show you something else besides video games that I found quite interesting. This is a card game called Dominion. Um, it's a deck building card game, and if you've heard of, you might have heard of that term with other games like Magic the Gathering, but this isn't quite like that. Let me jump in and show you how it works. I'm going to be playing just against a computer player. Um, you can download this game at PlayDominion.com, but it's also, of course, a physical card game. So, how this works is you have a deck of cards, and everyone starts with the same deck of cards. Now the goal is to end up with the most victory cards in your deck when the game ends. So like this card is the province, and it's worth six victory points at the end of the game, but only if it's in your deck. But there's these other cards that you can put in your deck that will help you buy them. So this province costs eight. But this hand, I have four. So how this works is you play your cards, so I have all these treasure cards that you start with. Each of these coppers gives you one gold that you can use to buy cards. And at the end of the turn, all of these cards are going to get discarded. And this deck is going to continually go through and shuffle and you're going to play cards that you buy. So your deck is going to continually improve and eventually we're going to be buying much more expensive cards. So for a cost of four, I'm going to buy this card, the Smithy, which lets me draw three cards when we play it. I don't get that now, but on future turns we'll get it. So here's the other five cards that we started the game with. Now I have three, and I'm going to buy a Silver. Instead of the Copper, which gives you one gold when you play it, the Silver gives you two. Okay. So since we only had ten cards, and I'm ignoring what the computer player does. Um, the deck gets shuffled whenever you need to draw, and there's no cards left. So now we see the silver that we bought is actually in our hand. Now I have five I can buy a card with. And without paying too much attention to what the cards do, because I haven't really said the full rules of the game, just the idea. I'll buy this market because it costs five. And now we have the smithy, which lets us draw cards. So here's really how the game works. On your turn, you can play one action card. So I have an action card in my hand, and this is the first time I've had one. And then I can draw these three cards. But you only get to play one action every turn. So I can't play this market even though I drew it. Now, some cards will let you get an additional action, and then you'll get to play more than one card in the turn. Like if I had this market first, I would get to draw a card, get another action. So now my action phase is over and we move to the buy phase. And that's when I get to play all of the treasures. So I have four coins. And I could buy anything costing up to four. I think I'm going to buy this card, the Militia. Now this is an attack card that actually affects the other player. So when I play it, I'll get two money, but then every other player has to discard cards. So it's going to really hurt their turn. And looks like they just bought one. Okay, here's another simple turn. I just have five. I'm going to just buy another market so we can move on. So we can see another turn. Okay. So now I have a bunch of action cards. So again, the market... I can draw a card... I get an extra action, and a buy and a coin. So every turn, I'm actually only allowed to buy one card, unless if a card gives me additional buys. So let's go and play the market. I get to draw a card, and I can actually play another card now. Do it again. Now I'll play the Militia. They have to discard down to three. So I actually got four money already, just from the effects of the cards. And then with the copper I'm holding, I actually have seven. I'm going to buy this gold, which is worth a whole three every time it's played. So we can really be getting eight every turn. Alright, uh, they just bought this card, which I'm going to go ahead and point out. The moat. Um, this card, when you play it, would just let you draw two cards, which is really not that great of an effect. Especially since you don't get another action from it. 
Um, but when another player plays an attack card, you may reveal this card from your hand. If you do, you're unaffected by that attack. So it's blue, and all the blue cards are reactions. There's actually not that many in the game. Um, basically, if you're holding a moat, someone plays the militia, you can just show it, and you're not going to have to discard. So I think you can see the benefit of cards that give you extra actions. So let's look at this card, the village. When I play it, I get to draw a card, but I get two additional actions. So this card can let you really start to pull off combos. But if you can play additional actions, but you don't have any other action cards in your deck yet, they're kind of worthless. Okay, let's play the market first so we can play another card afterward. Again, in the smithy. Okay, we're out of actions now. So we can't play the militia. We got a total of eight coins and three buys because the markets each gave one. So I don't know that I want to buy the point cards yet, even though that these are the point of the game. Um, victory cards don't actually do anything. So when I draw these estates, they're just taking up space in my hand. And they don't contribute to anything until the end of the game. So you, there's a trade-off between improving your deck and then at a certain point you want to start acquiring green cards. So I think I'm going to actually split the money and buy this card, which lets me play an action card twice. That can be helpful. And then this card, the remodel, which lets me upgrade cards in my hand. Crash a card from your hand, gain a card costing up to two more than the trash card. So I can get rid of some of these lower cost cards and get some better ones. Okay, just had the village as the only action in the hand. Didn't draw any action cards, so didn't really do us, us any good. For five. Uh, to try to keep things simple, I'll just buy another market. Since that's a simple card. Okay, the card we drew was the throne room. So, if I use the throne room, and now I get to pick an action card and play it twice, it's like I have two markets in my hand. But actually even better, because I have two actions instead, I would have normally had one. We apply everything on the card twice, but I don't have anything else anyway. So for five coins now. Yeah, again, keep things somewhat simple. Hopefully now we're at a good point to start getting higher amounts of money. Okay, the opponent played a militia. Do I have to discard cards? These copper are the least valuable things here. All right. I always play cards that give you the most amount of actions first because then that leaves open possibilities. So we draw a card, I get to play two more actions. So let's play the smithy, I'll have an action left. Draw cards so we can see more options. Let's go ahead and do the market because we'll get another card, another action. Now I have one action left, so I have to pick which of these two I want to play. So this is where it could get a little complicated. I have one money and I have five money here in my hand. I would have six. If I played the militia, I would actually have eight and I could buy a province. I think. I might actually want to do that. And then this will hurt the other player's turn. They had a moat though. But I do think I will buy the first province. So the game ends either when all the provinces are gone, which there are seven left in the stack, or any three piles at all are gone. Okay, let's play this mar market and the militia. No choices here. Eight coins again. Let's go and buy the second one. So they're going to start. Okay, they finally bought the f their first province. And these cards are going to start showing up and making it harder and harder to do things. Okay, village, two markets. Another market. And two coins is only five. So see these three victory point cards in the way? Um, I will buy this card which basically gives actions and money. That's pretty useful. All 
Alright, in this situation, none of these cards give me extra actions, so I'm only going to get to play one of them. But if I choose the Throne Room, I can at least play whichever one I choose twice. If I choose the Smithy, I'll get to draw six cards, but then if I draw action cards, I can't actually do anything with it. I think I'm actually going to play this for model card. So now I get to trash a card from my hand, and then get a better card and do that twice. Now this gold card has a cost of six, and the remodel lets me gain a card costing up to two more. That's eight, and a province actually costs eight. So that's an interesting trick. So that gold is gone, so our ability to actually make money is really down a lot. So it's better to do a little later, but I think it's worthwhile. But then I can trash this smithy, which gives, which costs four, and I can get the gold back even. But then I'm only going to have one coin, and no, I'm not going to buy anything that costs one. I'm not buying coppers because I think the average value of the cards in my deck give me more than one coin. And that's just going to water it out. You want, since you only get to draw five cards at the start of your hand, you want them to be as high valued as you can. So that's why trashing cards can also be extremely useful. Okay, here I got to discard cards, but discarding victory cards isn't going to hurt me any. Not really anything to pick here. I just have three coins. So I think I'm going to buy this. Seller only costs two, but I can discard cards from my hand and draw ones to replace it. So that might be helpful because I have more green cards in my de in my deck. So I can discard those and draw hopefully better ones. Alright, the market will let me play other cards. And with the village. Now I have the remodel. The rest of the money I have actually adds to eight. So I'd rather buy a province than trash one of these cards, so I'm actually going to choose not to play this. Almost all the time in, the, in this game you're going to play every card you have, but this one has some negative effects. Or sometimes you don't want to. So, just to point out, I'm not doing it, I've already ended my action phase, but I could have remodeled the gold into a province, and then I would have still had five money left. That would have been a great last move. For now, I don't want all the gold out of my deck. I got another province. Okay, let's play this market twice. And I got just five coins. So this card, the duchy, is only worth three points. It's half as good as the province, but it costs five. But they certainly contribute to the points at the end of the game, so let's go with that. They're buying duchies as well. Okay, this turn I have eight. Awesome. Another province. Not even counting how many I have. It's certainly a good idea to try to keep in mind how many points each player has, but I really don't do it. Okay, we're not getting a province this turn. So I just have this remodel, and I would have three coins otherwise. I'm kind of... This is the point where you're just really desperate for points. I think I'm going to remodel the copper. It costs zero. I can get a card costing up two, and I'll get just an estate, which is worth a single point. Then I have two money, and I'll just get another estate. Alright, this turn really showcases the value of the seller. I have nothing... All of these green cards do nothing. Play the seller. I can discard any number of cards. How about all four of these? I get four new cards. So that really saved this hand. Let's play the markets. Okay, after I drew all the cards, the last thing I drew was the throne room. But it's actually useless because I don't have another action card in my hand. So I can play it, but it's not going to have any effect. Okay, I have four coins. Um, I would much rather buy a useful card, but actually with four coins I can buy this card. The Gardens is another victory card. Um, the Province, Duchy, and Estate are in every game, along with Gold, Silver, and Copper. But, And these ten cards in the middle are actually randomized every game. So this special victory card isn't always in the game. But this game it is, and it's worth a point for every ten cards in my deck. Don't know how many that is. It's got to be more than a point. I'm sure it's worth more than two points. 
I actually have 30 cards in my deck. They just bought the last province, but... So that ends the game immediately. But it was actually a dumb move if the computer actually knew how many points they had. So I won with 41 points to 33. Gardens was worth 3. Hopefully that made sense. I know I probably went a little fast. But we'll play another one. I got uh, some of the sets set up here. So Dominion is an extremely expandable, customizable game. It's I can't remember when it came out, probably over 10 years ago. And there's been a lot of sets released, all with different base, all different action cards to pick. Um, I'm gonna pick the base set, so we probably will see some cards that were in the last one. Okay. So we see the throne room and the village are still here, but the rest are new cards. Are the militia still here, still here too? All right, for three, I'm gonna buy this card to start. Um, I'm gonna actually go in a little more detail. Let's see all of the options that I could have that I could pick. So the silver is always in the game to give me two money. Getting more cash in your deck is always great. The woodcutter also gives you two coins, but it lets you buy more than one card. But the negative effect here is it's an action card, so if you don't have an action, you don't get to play it. It's all the village. It kind of greases your engine up. Play more action cards, but if I don't have any action cards, it's a crappy card to buy first. Chancellor gives you two money, and you may put your deck into your discard pile. All right, this, if your first time seeing the game, that might make no sense at all why you'd want to do it. But the short answer is, by doing that, you get to shuffle your deck immediately, and you'll get to see cards that you bought sooner. But it's a pretty subtle effect. I think what I'm actually going to buy is the chapel. Even though it only costs two, it lets me trash up to four cards from your hand. That sounds awful, but then I can get rid of crappy cards and then be drawing really good valued cards really fast. So we'll do that. Now for four, I think I might buy... Let's see what the options are. So we got the throne room. Play an action card twice. If I bought that now, the only card it could be used on is the chapel, so that would be kind of kind of bad. The thief. So here's a wall of text. Each other player reveals the top two cards of the deck. If they revealed any treasure cards, you can they trash one of them that you choose, and you may gain any of the trashed cards. So basically, if they reveal the gold, let's say, they lose it and you gain it. But the odds of you getting good stuff from it is pretty low. Got the Militia, which can slow the opponent down. And then this card, the Bureaucrat, has a lot more text. Gain a silver card. Put it on top of your deck. So that's nice. We get to get silver just for playing this card every time. Every other player reveals a victory card from their hand and puts it on their deck or reveals a hand with no victory cards. So if they have a victory card goes back on their deck, so that means they have to draw it next turn, so that just slows them down. But I think I'm gonna buy this just for the sake of getting more silver. Alright, this hand I have two. You would think, buy a chapel, right? But, I don't really see the use of having two of these. Because I'm gonna play it once or twice, and then I'm probably not gonna wanna play it again. So I'm actually going to skip my turn because I think the deck with two of these is worse than my deck with one of them. And that's a bit to wrap your head around probably, why you would want to do that. All right, in this case, I have both action cards together because, well, shuffling and randomness hates me. So I have two choices. If I play the Bureaucrat, I can gain a silver and then I'll have more money in my deck next round. If I play the Chapel, I can get rid of these copper but the copper is actually the best money I have right now. So I'm going to play the Bureaucrat. They revealed a victory card and put it on their deck. Not so worried about that. Slows them down a bit. And with three, I think I'm actually going to buy another silver. I'm tempted to buy a village, maybe. Um, since silver kind of happens on its own, I think it's probably better to spend my buy on the village. 
Okay, play the village first because we get actions. Don't have much choice, get a free silver. They didn't have a victory card. Four coins. I think I'm, I'm debating between the militia and the throne room. And I think I'll go with the militia because slowing them down is pretty valuable. Okay, they played the bureaucrat, so we lost that victory card. It's back on top of the deck. But hopefully I'll have it with the chapel so I can burn it anyway. So for five coins... I think I'm going to go with... Hmm... Well, I'm thinking the library. I haven't shown you what it does, or one of these two, but I have a lot of action cards. So it's going to be likely I'm not going to be able to play them, but I think I'll go ahead and buy this council room anyway. So if you read this, you get four cards, which is just ridiculous. It's nearly a whole new hand, but it helps the other players. They get to draw a card for their next turn, but overall that's pretty worth it. Okay, here we go. The chapel, trash up to four cards from your hand. All of these are crappy cards. And I bet you're wondering, why would I want to trash an estate? It's worth victory points. But it's only worth victory points at the end of the game. Through the, throughout the game, it does nothing for me. So I think by having, by getting it out of my deck, I can do more in the middle of the game to have a better deck at the end of the game. Okay, no choices here. Play the Militia. They discard two cards. And I have eight. Eight is always painful early in the game. You would think, buy the province. But if I buy the province, my deck is going to get worse. And I'm not going to want to trash it. So I think, even though I have eight, I'm going to buy a gold. So that I can have more choices later. And be producing money. Not always good to buy the most expensive card. All right, always play the village first, gives you actions. Then I'm gonna play the council room to draw cards. Now I've got three action cards that I can choose from. I think I wanna do the chapel so I can get rid of the worst cards. And then I'm pretty much probably done with playing that. So I can trash up to four cards. Definitely the estate, definitely these two coppers. Um, I can trash the copper. If I do, I'll only have two money left to buy a card. And then I pretty much won't be buying a card. If I don't trash the copper, then I can at least get a silver, but I think I want a village, and I'm going to have to shuffle because there's only four cards left. So I'll at least be able to use it soon. So I think I'm going to leave this alone. I might actually trash the bureaucrat because I have a lot of action cards. I, I kind of regret buying it too. So it doesn't, oh, it's not always a bad thing to change your strategy in the middle of the game, but this is certainly a, probably a controversial pick here. And I'm gonna do it. Okay, they bought a province, so that means it's time to get on it. Play this militia. They only have three cards. Luckily I got nine dollars worth, so we'll do the same thing. Alright again, village. Play the council room, get a bunch of cards. I got two actions. Go ahead and play the militia. Play the chapel. Now let's see. I have two coins, and if I add up the rest, the gold would bring it to five. The two silvers would bring it up to nine. So I can trash these three coppers and still buy a province. Okay, now they're getting in the way. And they played the Bureaucrat, which forces me to put a victory card on top of the deck. That was maybe the only good effect that might have helped me later on if I had not trashed mine. I just have five here. So I have to decide if I want another action card or if I want a duchy. I think I want still to be able to do more stuff. As I pick which card. Let's do another council room. That feels overpowered as can be. Ok, 
a village, council room. Huh, again. But the awesome thing is, is I have a militia, so they're going to have to discard these cards that I'm letting them draw, and they're still only going to have three. But because I'm letting them draw first, they're going to be three good cards. Oh, I'm actually out of cards in my deck. <laughs> Did I even get any cards? Hope I didn't help them by mistake accidentally. So with all of the, actually with all the cards in my deck, I only get nine coins. So what I need to do is buy money, so I'm I'm not screwed in the future. And because I'm so short on money, I'm actually gonna buy a copper with my last buy. But that's something you do almost never. Okay, they did they play two council rooms? Wow. Okay, I'm not going to play this council room because I only have one card left. Now I have 14 coins. That is such an improvement. Definitely buying a province. Then with the six coins left, I think I am going to buy a gold. Because I do have the ability to buy more than one card when I play the council rooms. Hopefully I can get a really good turn. Okay, I didn't explain that library card, but basically they get to draw until they have seven cards. And they can sort of pick and choose which ones they keep. But it's a little complicated, I figured I'd leave it alone. Okay, let's play the villages. Play the council room. Still have two actions, but it's a chapel. Could throw the copper away, maybe it was a waste. But I was worried of not having much money. Um, I don't think I will, the game's pretty close to the end. But I have 13 coins. So, here is an interesting thing in Dominion. The game ends immediately whenever the provinces run out, and there's only two. So if I buy a province, then if the computer, if the other player buys the last one, I'm not going to get another turn. But if I avoid it, then I might get another turn to have a chance to get more points in two turns than I could in one. Either way, I'm buying see if I want to do that. So I could buy two duchies instead and still get six points, but I could buy a province and a duchy and get nine. So it's do I think I can make more than three points on the next turn? And I hate to say I think the answer to that is yes. Hmm. Okay, they actually didn't buy a card. Now, I have only one action. I have to choose one, which one of these to play. If I play the council room, then I'm going to draw cards, but then I can't play any of them. I think I'll play the militia. Hopefully they have to throw away a good card and just buy another duchy. Okay, they just got a duchy in an estate. Okay, these provinces came back because I had to put them on top of the deck before. I don't have really much choice here. Okay, this village is going to make me draw the card they just made me put back on top of the deck. But I have eight. I feel a little better now about buying this province because I've gotten a lot more duchies than they have over this time. Let's see what they do. Okay, they ended the game by buying the last province, but again, if they'd kept track of how many points they had, it was just a suicide move. So I think that work of buying the extra duchies really helped win that game. Okay, I'm going to choose a different set of cards here. So Seaside is one of the expansions to Dominion, and it has completely different cards than was in the base set that we saw. Let's see. I'm picking randomly from that set, so let's see what we get. So this entire set is new, but the main part of the game works the same way. So for four, let's look through some of these cards and see what I want to do. 
And so I think you can see now the variability of this game is extremely high. Um, I, I probably don't want to read through all of these cards initially. But I think I'll buy this one, the Cut Purse. I get two money, but then every other player has to discard a copper. And that can kind of hurt over the course of the game. And then with three, I think I'll just buy a silver so I can get the amount of money in my deck up. Okay, I got the cut purse right away on the next shuffle. So I'm going to have five money. They had to discard a card. Now with five, um, there's a few cards that cost five. Now you see that some of these cards are orange, so this is a new type of card. So let's look at this card first, the Merchant Ship. Now, and at the start of your next turn, get two gold. That's pretty powerful. Two gold now, and two gold later in addition to whatever you can do on that turn. But the Wharf does something pretty similar. Now at the start of your next turn, draw two cards and get another... be able to buy another card. Getting to draw two cards on a next turn means you start with seven. That can be insanely powerful. So it's which do you want more? Two money or two cards? I think over the course of the game I want the two cards. Two money might be better short term. Alright, for three, I think what I want is this, the warehouse. I get to draw three cards, which is amazing, like a smithy. But I get to play another action, it doesn't stop the turn. But then I have to discard three cards, but I'm relying on... I'm probably going to have crappy cards. So this helps you really filter through the deck. Okay, another four. Did buy another cut purse. Um, it looks like none of these cards gives you plus two actions. Um, I just have to take my word for it without me reading all of these cards. But the only cards that give you extra actions is this Haven gives you one. The Warehouse gives you one. So I actually don't want many action cards in my deck this time. So go with the silver. Okay, they made me discard a copper because they played a cut purse. Play the wharf, get two cards. Unfortunately, I can't play them. I only have two coins. So let's pick this one. You get to draw a card to replace it, and it doesn't stop the turn. Set aside a card from your hand face down at the start of your next turn. Put it into your hand. So usually you don't make use of all the cards every turn. And if that's the case, I can maybe save some money for the next turn when it might be useful. Or worst case, I can throw a green card away. And not hurt my current turn. Okay, the wharf now does its other part, and now I start with seven cards. I don't have any actions though. I have eight coins. But I can buy two cards because the wharf had an additional buy on it. I probably don't want a province at this point. Um, I probably want to stick to like money. Probably just one gold. Too bad it wasn't nine. I could have bought a gold and a silver. Gold will do. For two, I guess I'll buy another haven. Alright, I play the Haven, so I get to choose a card to set aside for next turn. If I play the Cut Purse, which I'll get to, then I'll have a total of three money. I don't want to have two. Let's just set this estate aside. I'll buy a Silver. Okay, the Haven gave me that estate back. Use the Warehouse. I get to draw three cards, but then I have to discard three cards. So that estate's perfect for that. Um, I'm going to play the Cut Purse, which gives me two money, so let's throw the singles away. And that totals seven. One more gold, I think. At least one more gold. And now I have eight. Probably too early, but I'm going to go ahead and buy a province. The warehouses at least keep them from getting as much in the way. Alright, havens give extra action, so let's play those. Set aside an estate, and let's see.
Let's hope I draw money. I'll set aside the estate and hope I can do something this turn. Okay, I did draw two coppers. Just get another silver. Okay, there's the two estates that I set aside. And then the wharf I played lets me draw the two cards. Play the warehouse, and I have plenty of green cards to discard for it. Two buys, and look at all this money. Twelve coins. Province. And... Maybe one more warehouse. Okay, I feel I should probably explain what they did. The treasure map, which they bought two of. If you get this, and you have another copy of it in your hand, then you trash them, but then you get four golds that you get immediately on your next turn, which is just crazy. But the odds of those syncing up in your deck usually isn't worth it, but it's just a really lucky card, so I chose to ignore it. Okay, I only have one action to play that. Seven coins. Probably want to buy another gold. Don't want more action cards. Okay, let's play the warehouse. Worst case, I can throw away the cards I drew. One. I probably don't want to play another warehouse, because every time you play a warehouse, you're going to end up with less cards in your hand. And... I'm actually going to throw away the haven, because I want to try to get as much money as possible right now. Okay, awesome. I didn't draw any more action cards. And that's nine. Perfect. Okay. After using the Haven, I have five money. And then I can buy a duchy, so I'm just going to save an estate for next turn. Okay, he just gave me a ton of money. Happened to uh, get shuffled together. We'll take another province. The game is nearly over. Five money, get a duchy. Alright, let's play this warehouse. Got three green cards to discard. Play the cut purse and that will end up with seven. Not eight. One of the most painful things in Dominion is to have seven money. Um, there's something on the silver pile, but I don't really want to explain it since it's not going to really affect anything now. But it has to do with this embargo card. Um, basically if I buy the silver, I get a curse. But, and that's all you need to know. So I'm going to have one more turn before I need to shuffle. I probably should just buy the duchy and hope I have enough money to come up. Okay. Unfortunately, I drew two action cards with my wharf. I can't use them. Three. Um. Yeah, I don't want to buy the silver. So let's buy warehouse so I hopefully can get better cards. Wow, seriously? They had two buys. They bought a, a province and a merchant ship. But, they could have bought a duchy, so I think that was kind of a silly move, with one left. Okay, might be the last turn, but I don't really want to set a, a card aside. I gotta discard three, so discard the two victory cards, and then if I count the other money, if I play the cut purse, I'm gonna actually have enough. And I think I'm just gonna do that. I got two buys, so I might as well play this warehouse. I drew three victory cards, so I'm just going to chuck them right back. Play the cut purse. Play all the money. Nine. Hopefully I got the most points. <laughs> we do by quite a lot. 42 to 24, because I got five of the provinces. One that split. Yeah, I really don't keep count as much as I should. I think that's the only, the last game I'm going to play, but I want to give you an idea of how many cards are actually in this game. So with, with this application, you can create your own 
set of kingdom cards, what they're officially called. And you can pick from the various sets. So this is a list of all of the sets that came out. Also some promo cards. But if I just look for... We just look through some of these real quick. So th that's the list of all the cards in the base set. Not a ton. We look at the side which we played with. Quite a few more. And there's definitely concepts that I didn't even touch in this game. Like, let's just look in the base set. There's a card called the Witch, which gives every other player a curse card. That's kind of like an estate. But instead of being worth one point, it's worth a negative point. So you can give them th those to lower their score, but even more importantly, really slows them down to where you're going to be even lucky to have three money every turn. Some cards can have more than one type. There's just so much variability here that it takes a long time for the game to feel stale. One thing that this expansion added, Prosperity, is another base card, Platinum. So like gold, it gives you money, but instead of three, it gives you five. It costs nine though, which is more than a province. But early in the game, if you have nine money, you probably want this. Heck, even late. But to go along with it, there's an even higher point card. 10 points for the cost of 11, but with this set, you can certainly reach it. All right, just looking through here quick. There's so many cards. But hopefully this was a good introduction to how this game works. Hope everyone enjoyed it. But with that, if you found this interesting, leave the video a like. Maybe I'll be playing more of this sometime. But I'll see you later.